What up players, it's Wobot's Tail in this mud. Welcome back to my how to paint an iron blaster tutorial. This next section we're going to be looking at the Rhinox, at the front, the little baby Rhinox. And um, I love this model. I love the old Rhinox. I love the Forge World Rhinox Rider models. Oh, those are so awesome. Those are so cool. And I'm really glad they came out in plastic. I kind of was hoping that the new Ogre Kingdom's army would have Rhinox Riders. Morn Fang Cavalry is pretty cool and they're super powerful but um, just the look of these Rhinox is just so awesome. So these are the paints we're going to be using to start with. Oh and let me tell you about my, my, my color scheme for it. For it. I was thinking about doing like a, a creamy like uh, ivory kind of fur tone uh, but then I was thinking okay if the cannon is going to be like gold or brass and the carriage is very <coughs> very brown <coughs> because of all the wood and that's just the way it is then um, we're gonna need some kind of color to offset that and going going into cream or like denim stone would kind of be too much so I think the fur color is gonna stick close to what the games workshop is gonna be plus you've also got these um, these giant thunder tusk bracers on either side of the thing, the Rhinox, plugged into it, and these are going to be that creamy bone colored, so after thinking about all that, I just decided, okay, yeah, we'll just stick with Games Workshop. Daddy knows best. So, we are, um, I, I primed it with my duplicate color sandable primer, so this is actually already primered. It might look like the bare plastic right out of the kit, but it's actually primered and ready for painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with, we're actually not going to start with flat gray. Um, we're going to start with carrot and granite, which has a little bit of brown in it. So it's it's like Adeptus Battle Gray, but it's got a little bit of brown in it. And um, I used it for the stone, if you remember my how to paint uh, Iron Blaster, the first video. I used it to paint the, um, the stone blocks at the front of the wagon. So now I'm going to use it in much the same way and what we're doing is dry brushing it. So I dipped the carrot and granite into the, the <coughs> uh, dip my brush into the carrot and granite and now I'm going to try to catch the the fur. We're gonna do the fur first and then the skin because of all the dry brushing that we're gonna need to do. It's just gonna be easier to um, go back and do the skin afterwards rather than painting like I usually would, which is from the bottom up or from the innermost sections outwards, just because there's a lot of breaks in the skin. Hope you guys are all doing well. I plan to get a lot of videos out this week because uh, I'm on spring break, so I've got a week of really nothing <coughs> nothing pressing to do in the daytime for any of my jobs. Uh, most things that need to be done I can do while waiting for these videos to upload. Things I'm prepping for school and for uh, for some of my some of my jobs at night. It's good having multiple jobs. The the only thing is that you know, you end up not with not that much free time to do the things that you want to do anymore. Like Warhammer. So you can tell already just by <coughs> just by looking that the carrot and granite really livens up the tone of the, the fur. It gives it some great depth. And uh, the color is just really really good on it. It's that mid mid section between being a pure brown, something like Kemri Brown or Calton Brown, and um, gray, like Codex Gray, Astronomicon gr Battle gr uh, Adeptus Battle Gray, stuff like that. So this is going to be a great a great base color for our fur. Oops. Stay on your, stay on your mount.
I've been looking at some, <clears throat> um, looking at Warseer lately, uh, looking at project logs for inspiration and stuff. And there's this, there's so much great inspiration you can find there. I think before YouTube tutorials came out, before when you had to go just look at things, uh, picture, picture step-by-step -step guides, then websites like Daka Daka. Warseer.com, cool mini or not, those their their articles and <laughs> tutorials, copyrighted tutorials, were really really good at giving you the breakdown, the steps that you need to um, to do stuff and being inspirational too. And I found a lot of great stuff. There's this one guy who um, painted his ogres to look like Bretonians. <clears throat> and that guy's work is really awesome. Green stuffed out of capes and, and whatnot. Armor, cloth. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry for a little bit and move on with Calvin Brown, which is gonna be the straps of the, the guy's harness. So. Running down his back. Poor guy, his collar is like bolted into his neck. No wonder he has such a grumpy face. Okay, we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna come back and uh, continue dry brushing and highlighting up the skin, uh, I mean the fur, as well as the harness, the brown leather harness. While we're waiting for that to dry, actually, why don't we go on and do something else? So, we'll, we'll paint the horns, then up stone, <coughs> as a base coat, and I want to make a shout out to my good buddy Usha T1. You can find him in my subscribers list. He's going to be. He says he does a weekly podcast for uh, Warhammer and uh, is planning on doing a lot more stuff for beginners and beginning painters, beginning gamers, stuff like that. So that's one of the things that I try to promote on my channel. People who are doing things out there in the community to help people getting into the game and uh, especially lately uh, being reminiscent about you know while unboxing the new Warhammer starter set and just thinking about how I got started into the hobby and how much of a game changer this new paint range is going to be is try to get more people into the hobby so that we can grow our community because it's a great community like the the wargaming community out there is so, so helpful, super nice and friendly, and uh, most people are really, really just really cool. So, it's always cool to give back, you know what I mean?
All right, so those are the tusks. Easy, easy peasy. The only thing is you don't wanna, I mean, if you're painting straight out of the pot, like for me, for this, I happen to be doing, even though I should be watering it down on my wet palette, um, you wanna spread it out. And if, you, if you're not gonna thin it down, thin the paint down, then you wanna just make sure that it's, you're not painting on the paint too thickly. So I just put some water on my brush, dipped it into the denim stone, and now I'm painting it out as, uh, as much as I can. Let's get him down a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> we're gonna do next is we're gonna paint the teeth, denim stone as well. the teeth and actually any horns that are jutting out of this guy's head. It's got weird, weird tusk-like growths on either side of his head. Ceratops. Look at you, little Rhinox. He's so cute as you are. my kitty in the background. I closed the door because uh, the air conditioning is on and he wants to go outside now. Yes. Okay, one second. Igor, yes, master. Are you busy? No, just text messaging my hoy elf girlfriend. You, um, let the cat out, please. What was that, master? Cook up the cat. Cook the cat up. No. Open the door and let the cat out. Oh. Well, I suppose. Wait. 
when you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you, smiles with you. Ta-da! All right, let's come back in a second to do the uh, chains. Okay, so as you can see, I also painted in this guy's toenails. I did them off camera so I could get them off of the uh, little cork peg. So what we're going to do now is we are going to paint the silver onto the belts, the chains, and all of that. We're going to use bolt gun metal. And after we're done with this, we're going to get onto the uh, skin that shows up underneath the fur. <coughs> And looking at the box art, it's pretty much the same color as the fur, so what I think I might do is actually give it a different, um, a different color just for fun. So starting with the silver though, you have, <laughs> <coughs> you have the silver plates around. guy's collar here. We've got the silver plates on the tusks. things with the rivets on them, I'm just assuming that they're um, iron plates driven into the, the leather belt. <clears throat> but now I'm gonna paint the chains. Especially, like I said before, you want to get it from the top because that's the angle that people are usually going to see your models from, from the top. and what I think is the hardest part to paint is just because there's so much of them is going to be the spikes that are studded into the guy's collar. I guess it's not really a collar, it's a harness thing that's got him hooked up to the iron blaster. There's just so much you're really gonna have to Take your time, plan it out.
Okay. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to base the uh, Chaos Star and the guy Snout and Calvin Brown for now. Because we're going to eventually be painting that gold little flash of bling, but for now, we're just going to base coat it. So now we can get onto the skin of our Rhinox, and I'm actually going to see how the Camry Brown turns out. If it's going to be too light, then we'll make sure to hit it with a little bit of extra wash when we're doing the <clears throat> the washes for the skin tone. But let's see. Yeah, that looks okay. I kind of like it. So just paint his skin all over Camry Brown. <coughs> I'm gonna do that now and um, my camera right, might run out of battery so I'm gonna go and charge it up and continue painting and we'll show you what all of that looks like when we get back. You just wanna paint all the skin, just do every leg, every foot, just like I did this foot. Paint the Kemi Brown all around and any exposed patches of skin. Okay, so here's what we ended up with. Um, I kind of like it. It's different from the box and you can tell where the skin is, whereas on the box you can't really tell where it goes from the fur to the skin because the Games Workshop color scheme is that it's all painted in this kind of dark gray color tone so I kind of like it um, before we go into the shading you're gonna paint shiny gold onto the um, little nose ring thing that he's got and then we can get on to the, the super awesome washes It's only going to be really one. This is the last step of this, of uh, this part of the tutorial, and oh man, I just love the different, the browns and the different, uh, the metal and the keratin granite. I think it looks great. So we're going to use Bada Black. We're just going to cover the whole model in it. So this is where you want to use the mount. And actually, you don't want to. You, you want to try not to cover the um, the tusks at the front, but everywhere else is fair game. Especially to give the leather the, the dark um, dark leather look. saying it and I'm gonna keep saying it this is the part that really makes the models come alive and um, I'm just really happy that GW is keeping the uh, keeping the washes you are gonna paint the other horns the smaller horns with the bad at black that's fine 
The reason we don't want to paint <coughs> the tusks, the, the big tusks with them, try not to, is because we're going to try to do a gradual fade from brown to, to white. And the, um, the tusks at the front, I'm going to try not to get the bad black on it. <clears throat> if you can, if you get a little bit on it, that's fine. Um, you just want to go crazy on the whole thing, like with the rest of the model. And with the teeth, we could see when you use bad eye black on the teeth, you can tell the difference between where the where each tooth ends and the next one begins. So that's really cool with using bad eye black. If you use just Devlin mud, then it's not going to have as clean of a break between each tooth. <clears throat> if that makes any sense. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use some Devlin mud now on the horns at the front and you're also getting it of course on the um, metal plates there as well if you think this is a little too dark, you don't want to go this dark, then just use Griffin Sepia instead. Then it'll match kind of the, the tusk on the um, on the wagon. But I think this is gonna work fine. Okay, hey, I'm gonna let this all dry. I'm gonna start uploading and rendering this part one. This has been part one of how to paint the Rhinox that comes with the uh, iron blaster kit and this is how he looks once the washes are on we're gonna let them dry try not to let anything pool like this spread it out so it doesn't pool especially on the flat surfaces like the tusk okay and then I'll let it dry and then once it's dry we'll come back with part two with the highlighting details like the eyes doing all that stuff And then we can move on to the giant honking cannon. Thought, I, thought I'd start this next part of the tutorial with something fun though and um, do the Rhinox. <clears throat> okay, see you guys in the next one.